So you are here for Sibling Rivalry um, with Child Care Answers. My name is Jamie and I'm the Family Engagement Specialist here at Child Care Answers. And um, together, my colleague and I, Lauren George, who um, emphasizes a lot of our work on infants and toddlers, created this content. If you have any questions regarding your infant and toddler, you can absolutely email Lauren and then you can email me, um, Jamie, for any other information. Um, I worked as a preschool teacher for many, many years. Um, so I tend to work a lot with our preschool families and or school age families, but um, we both can help you and be a great resource for you um, as you raise your little ones. We do recommend that you look and take a peek at our website. It is fairly new and um, we rebranded it and made it live last fall in 2021. Um, it's crazy to think we're already in April of 2022, um, but we are excited about what we have available on our website. There is a resource center there um, and you can just type in information that you're looking for, whether it's uh, maybe some literacy development or language development, or maybe you just need some activity ideas for your infant. Um, we have a lot of resources and I'll be sharing some of those with you today um, via our chat box and just our information as well. We are your local child care resource and referral. So we um, support families in finding child care um, if that is something you need. Um, we also help families with um, just parent education and workshops like this and then connecting with community resources as well. Um, we focus on Hendricks, Hamilton and Marion County, but there are four other SDAs um, or areas or child care resource or referrals that do the same thing as us. Um, again, we are child care answers, but we can always help you find one um, that meets your county if you're not from here. We are here because siblings don't always get along and that is something that um, can be really hard for families um, and can be very tiresome for parents, um, but it is normal. Sibling fighting is normal. If you have siblings, think back to your childhood um, and what you guys went through, you know, whether or not you're best friends now, there were times in your childhood where you did fight. Um, so it's common for the relationship just to swing back and forth in between just being best friends and adoring each other, loving on each other, protecting each other, but then the next moment detesting one another and just <laughs> really just picking on each other's nerves. Um, we have all been there. So as kids get older, they really do start to vie for the same toys, for the same um, attention for you or your partner or just other family members or friends as well. Um, the younger one may become more independent, which is really great and that's what's supposed to happen. But as they're getting more independent, they're starting to get tired of being bossed around by their older sibling. So these developmental markers are causing a little bit of a conflict um, between their relationship because it's changing and it's growing. Um, and just to put it another way, how would you feel you know, if someone else came into your home and started telling you how to be and what to do, um, it can be hard and tiresome um, because when, when you bring a new infant into the home, for instance, your other child is learning a whole new routine, learning a whole new relationship with you, learning a whole new relationship with the sibling or with your partner. So there's a lot of new things that can be happening and they could be happening all the time and under your nose and we're just not realizing it because our children are growing all the time and they're developing all the time. And also young children just can't express their emotions and frustrations as verbally as we can as adults. Um, it's even hard for me to express my emotions sometimes when I'm um, just, you know, working through being sad or upset. Um, it can be hard just to say like, I'm sad and I'm upset and I don't want to do that right now as an adult. And so it's hard for younger children to be able to do that as well. So they might not be sharing, they might be hitting or pushing or yelling, especially at the end of the day. And especially when it's times like bedtime or early in the morning when they're just getting up. So this is all typical. Um, it's not abnormal and it's something that um, you obviously experience, especially if you're here, you're probably experiencing at home um, right now as well. So how do we help our kids um, get along? Um, it's 
you know, not always easy. And um, some children are just have different personalities. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that and what those personalities look like today. So I'm going to go ahead and jump to a little bit more detail about that. So many different things can cause siblings to fight or not get along. Um, one reason is that they have these evolving needs and they're different um, than each other's because of their ages and because of their development. And we talked a lot about that in the slide before here. Um, but for toddlers, for instance, they're naturally protective of their toys. It's not developmentally appropriate for them to be sharing at this time. They're learning that skill. Um, and then you have like your school age children, maybe your kindergartner or first grader. They have an often a strong concept of what's fair and what's not fair. And so it's fair to share and that's what you do. You share because it's fair and that's what developmental spot they're at in their play but their brother or sister is not there because they're just learning how to just protect their toys and to play with their toys and how to use those toys in their own um, learning and growth and development so right there is can be a very strong um I guess, point of contention between um, your children as they're growing. So it's it's natural. And this is something that you might see and one of the reasons why it might happen. So um, I think with this stage, it's important to really start to have that conversation with your children about what is fair and that fair does not mean equal. And I know it's a it's an old image, but that image of like trying to see over the fence and you're trying to look over and fair isn't giving everyone the same size box to stand on to look over the fence. Fair is about um, giving someone the right size box to be able to stand on to look over the fence. So for me, I might have a smaller box than someone who's shorter than me. Um, and that's equal. Um, it's not fair. Uh, so I mean, I guess that's fair. Um, not exactly equal is what I was trying to say. Another way that you can really um, help children understand this is using um, a Band-Aid analogy. And I really like this analogy because I think it relates to young children who love band-aids. Um, but you, you can just ask them like, what do you need when you cut your finger or you cut your arm? And then you talk through, oh, you need a band-aid. A band-aid will help keep the germs out. The band-aid helps you, helps that cut feel better and, you know, make it healthy again. Now, what do you do when you have a stomach ache? Do you need a Band-Aid? What does it, what helps you feel better? I guess some children, a Band-Aid helps anything feel better, but um, not necessarily um, with a stomach ache. And you could talk about how maybe you give them crackers or some club soda, or you help them go take a nap to help their stomach feel better. Um, that's, not everyone needs a Band-Aid in a certain situation. So not everyone's gonna share in a certain situation or your brother might need this, but you do not need this. Um, and trying to help them understand that fair isn't always equal. Another reason why we see fighting in our young children it can just be their temperaments. Um, we all are born with our own individual temperaments and this does include mood and disposition and adapt adaptability. Um, we each have our unique personalities that really are gonna play a role in this. Um, one child may be more laid back and easygoing and more flexible while someone, another child might be a little bit more um, type A in the sense of this is the routine, this is how we do things and um, this is the way I expect things to go. Um, and when it doesn't go that way, they might feel a little bit more rattled. So it's important to know that um, each of your children are different and you probably experience this daily and you know that, but just to remind yourself of that when they do start to fight, um, that this child's probably acting this way because of their temperament versus this child is a little bit more sensitive and that's their temperament. Both of those are okay. And how do we kind of blend together to learn about each other? Now, sometimes children have specific needs or special needs. Maybe this is due to a physical developmental delay, maybe a learning or emotional developmental delay. 
But whatever that is, it may require some more parental time and some parent attention. And this can be difficult for siblings. Um, other children may pick up on this disparity and they can act out to just get attention. Um, maybe they are acting out because they're afraid of what's happening or maybe they're acting out because they want more attention or maybe they want something that the other child gets because of a specific need. So it's important just to keep that in mind. Um, if you do have a child with a special need you, and with siblings, you probably have experienced this as well. And it's important just to set aside time for each child. And that's an activity that we share with everybody um, in general. Um, when it comes to sibling relationships is just to, to make time to date your children. That sounds kind of silly or weird, but um, just take time to be with your children one-on-one, -on -one. whether it's in the home or you just go out to a park together, or maybe you take one of your children out for ice cream, and then the next day you take another child out for ice cream. Um, my sister-in-law and brother-in-law, they have um, quadruplets, and so they each want to try to make time for each of them. And so they take them out on a special day, the day they came home from the NICU. So instead of celebrating their birthday all together, um, which they do, but they also try to celebrate the individual as well. And I think that's a great um, practice to keep in mind is just finding time to celebrate your individual children um, and helping them understand that um, your attention is there for them. Again, it's not fair and equal all the time, but I'm here for you and I'm here to play with you and listen and love on you um, just the same. Great. Well, um, now we know some reasons why siblings may fight. Now we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into how we might be able to prevent some of these. So um, it's not um, a, I guess a black or white science cut and dry the way that we can prevent. Um, but these are just some general tips. The first one is just to lose the labels. Um, oftentimes we as parents uh, might say, oh, you're, you're the silly child or the wild child or you're, you're the smart child or you're a smarty. And you, you create these fun um, little labels that you might be using out of jest. Um, however, sometimes this can create competition between siblings. So if one child's always called the smarty in the family, then without meaning to, it could be implying that the other children aren't as smart. And so just considering your labels and how that can be impacting um, the relationship between your children, uh, just considering things like how you can embed teamwork and persistence and kindness with, um, within those relationships. Also, you can arrange for attention. Um, like I said, just taking 10 to 15 minutes, uh, well, the one-on-one -on -one dates is what I was talking about, but then um, also taking 10 to 15 minutes um, where you're doing something that is all child-centered um, each day. Maybe this is right before bedtime and you're giving them 10 to 15 minutes to read a book or maybe um, to read a book with them, or maybe it's like a 10, 15 minutes in the car ride. It's just you and one of the children. And so that time is really dedicated to listening to your favorite songs and letting your child choose those songs. Um, just trying to embed those in your day and finding time within your already scheduled routine can really help you instead of feeling like it's something additional you need to add into your day to um, improve a relationship. I think, you know, we all have these natural routines and it's really easy just to say, hey, come join me in this routine as opposed to having to recreate the wheel. Um, so arrange for that attention and be mindful of that. And then also teach conflict resolution. And this is just happening all the time. Um, you know, I, I think there's all, it's really easy sometimes to say, go to timeout or take a break, um, which, you know, taking a break is not, uh, is a good strategy. It can be a very good strategy, but sometimes children also need to learn um, the words to say when they're angry and upset too. So using things like, an I feel statement, I feel upset and I feel angry because you knocked down my blocks and ha ha helping them find those words um, and giving them words to say for turn taking, like, may I please play with 
this um, and giving them those words so that they can have them, um, especially the younger children in, um, in your home, like those toddlers who don't have the language yet and they're just learning, they need someone to share that with them. Um, and even your preschoolers, when they get really frustrated, they're not gonna, those words are gonna fly out because <laughs> they're ready to go um, because they're kind of going into that bottom brain part where they're just going into um, fight or flight when they get very upset. So just helping them control their anger, taking deep breaths and giving them statements like I feel, and then finish the um, emotion and give a reason why. And so I think helping children um, have those feelings, words, um, what angry looks like, what it is, and then also helping them um, just learn ways to control that temper, taking deep breaths or walking away can, again, be a tool that you use in addition to having some words too. Another way to prevent sibling rivalry is just to stay out of those little squabbles. So give them a chance to just work it out on their own. Um, help them by not helping them sometimes. Um, if you hear a little squabble going on, and I mean, this is not like you're screaming, this is not you're uh, maybe hitting or throwing events. Um, this is more of just like the disagreeing disagreements. Um, they might have a little bit of yelling, but it's not, it's not exploded. Um, and so these are great ways for your children to learn how to work out and get to know each other. And then also to get to know themselves, to get to know how they can empower, um, use their words to empower um, what they need during play and in any environment. And then also you can um, calm the conflict. So instead of um, just listening to one side, listening to both, um, having time to just hear what's going on um, and what happened. Um, you might have to step in and that's completely appropriate and you know your children and at what point you need to step in. Um, but then just taking a moment and saying like, look, we need to figure this out. I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed because you both are screaming. And so I want to hear what this person, what happened. And according to this person, then we hear what happened to this person. And then we're going to come to a solution together. Um, so you're hearing both sides of the story. And then lastly, this mentality of being all in the same boat. Um, if we are fighting over this game and we have tried to not fight and we have tried to share this game and we just cannot do it, then the game's going away. You might need to go up to your room um, because that's what you need when you're getting upset. And then you, the other child, might need to just play in the playroom by mom or dad or grandma or grandpa just to make sure that you know, they're able to find their calm. And so you might have to separate, but no one gets to play with the game because we aren't playing well together. So just kind of keeping a fairness in terms of play um, and when you decide that something is all done. Another way to just really build into your siblings' relationships and preventing that sibling rivalry is just exploring shared experiences together. The first one is our bubble play handout that we have online. You can go visit this link and there's a whole um, list of ways to play with bubbles from infants all the way to school agers. And so there's ways there that you can encourage play. Um, maybe your school ager blows the bubbles and your infant chases after it by crawling around. Um, I know my 11 month old really, really, really loves bubbles right now and just like watching them go around. And maybe your preschooler um, can blow bubbles for your uh, young toddler and that's all they do, but it's fun and it's entertaining and keeps them busy. You can have dance parties together. There are definite um, benefits, um, social, emotionally, um, and also um, other types of benefits, even math or literacy benefits to dancing together, um, which we could talk about another time. But um, there's a lot of benefits for a little dance party that helps just bring a smile to each other's faces and just be silly and have fun. We also have some ideas for block play. 
uh, some of these, you know, might not be the best for maybe your infants, but definitely from toddlers up, there are ways here that you can use to play with blocks together um, and engage in that. We have chalk painting resources online and we also have um, a scavenger hunt you can do. It's called our spring scavenger hunt. And it's a really fun way just to go on a walk, but then keeping each other engaged together. So um, can you find a bird chirping? Can you hear a bird chirping? Or can you find a nest in a tree? Um, trying to take a walk together, enjoying that time together, but then also having a purpose to the walk can sometimes help build a relationship there. Big box, boxes like your Amazon boxes are great tools for play. You can make spaceships, you can make cars, you can make tunnels, you can make ramps. Um, just give a child a box and see what they do with it. It's amazing. And then lastly, open-ended play materials. So this can mean things like blocks or magnetiles. Um, as you can see on this screen, um, you can actually use magnetiles on your garage door. Um, most garage doors are magnetic, so that's pretty fun and pretty cool. Um, children find that as a new experience. Um, also, Play-Doh would be considered an open-ended uh, material. And there is a 31 days of Play-Doh calendar. There are lots of cool resources there um, and different ways to play with Play-Doh. Um, maybe you don't do that in terms of a calendar like every day, but maybe there's some ideas there that you can do with your younger children and then some of your older children. Um, Play-Doh is, um, I mean, I still love playing with Play-Doh, so it's, it goes cross ages for sure. And then some tips for support and behaviors. Um, first of all, all behaviors have a meaning um, and they send a message. So um, I think it's important for us to know that um, our children, when they're acting out, they're trying to tell us something. They're trying to say, I want to do this or I need your attention and I don't know how to ask for it or sometimes they're saying I don't want this I don't want the broccoli so I'm gonna throw it on the floor um wow that's not how we would prefer them to behave it's important for us to remember that they're trying to tell me something whether their language isn't there or they're too tired or you know they just haven't learned that skill all behaviors have meaning um also um, we talked a little bit about this but just listen to both sides and avoid the comparison trap um and just know that like just because they're older doesn't mean they're always going to um behave the way that you expect them to um, or that you would like them to because as children get tired or hungry or um, just have had a rough day, um, they can get, they can still experience some of this as well. And then lastly, I think um, this is really hard. Um, I have been, like I said earlier, I've been a preschool teacher and have really um, experienced this reprimanding and tattling, but we really wanna resist this urge. We wanna resist the urge to um, reprimand tattling. Um, and this could be really difficult. I mean, a lot of times we want to be like, figure it out yourself. And um, there is a place for that. Um, and, you know, we do want them to figure it out themselves. But then also we want them to know that we're a safe place to go to if they're feeling um, uh, like stuck in what to do. And, you know, tattling really happens because young children are learning about rules. They are trying to figure out where they relate in terms of these rules, but then also they're still needing attention and they still don't know what to do all the time when they come to a problem. And so with this experimenting of power and control and relationships built while learning to solve conflicts, you're going to get tattling and this is very developmental and it's very appropriate, um, but it, again, it's hard, so we wanna resist that urge. Um, I think just letting them know that like, hey, I'm here for you, I hear you, and I can see that you're frustrated is just like the first step and just saying like, got it, you're upset that so-and-so did X, Y, and Z. Um, but then also going back to it and saying like, but you're kind of tattling right now. And tattling is when you tell, you're telling on somebody on their actions. So let's think of different ways that we can 
fix this problem. And so talk about those different ways with them, whatever the situation is, and then talk about fairness and justice. And just the idea that like sometimes people are just not going to follow the rules. Um, I know many adults who don't follow the rules um, when, you know, maybe they should. And so sometimes people are just not going to follow the rules when they should. And I know that can be hard and that can be frustrating, but you know, you're trying to do the right thing. So instead of maybe tattling, maybe we can do, we can share, um, we can share some ideas or, or give them some support on, how, on what to do in that particular situation. Um, you know, every situation is so different and you'll be able to, I mean, <laughs> help solve the three-year-old's problem, I'm sure, and help them go and solve it as well. Um, but the most important thing for them to learn is that they're in control of their own actions and we can't control others, but we can, we can talk through it, we can find problems, and we can solve those problems together. Um, and if they don't want to solve those problems together, then, then maybe it's time to talk to an adult, or maybe then it's time just to walk away and just say, this is not what I'm going to play with right now. So helping them come to those decisions and making those choices. Um, it's a very complex um, way of problem solving. And I think sometimes we often forget how complicated it can be sometimes for children. Well, that is the end of our workshop today. And I um, know it was quick and it was just a quick 30 minutes and just wanted to give you some tips and reasons why siblings do experience rivalry. Um, it definitely is something that, um, you know, we know happens all the time, but it, it can be, um, it can be good to know the reasons why so that they can help inform what we do um, moving forward. Really, I just would love for you to, to just take a moment um, today, this afternoon, just to think through how will I support uh, my children's relationship uh, moving forward and, and what can I do to help prevent maybe some of those fights, um, but then also what can I do to encourage um, each of my children during those um, the squabbles, if you will. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, it's on the screen and really look forward to um, just doing these workshops and hoping that you guys can come back again. So thank you so much.